Um, I think what we, we failed to do last time was to let you know that we didn't find anybody who had um, um, any overlap with their research advisors. So great job for, um, you know, sticking with the novel ideas. So that's great. The second thing we should say is that um, uh, you, you should have gotten your AIMS page comments from faculty. And I, I asked if you haven't yet to, um, to be sure and let us know and we'll write all of them tonight. So if you haven't gotten your AIMS page critiques back, Please, and you haven't emailed us yet, let Ed and I know so that we can remind the faculty. And then the last thing I'll say is that um, we created a survey in um, Qualtrics. It's only four questions. Ed and I just want to know what you think of the class so far. And the nice thing is that if you um, spend the time to um, if you spend the time to fill out that uh, that survey, you know, and there are um, constructive comments that you provide to us that we can actually implement those in our class this semester. So your feedback can help this class now for you. So um, that's why we do a midterm survey so that you can have some control and some um, feedback, um, some input into the class. So please let us know um, how we're doing and what we can improve. Um, there's pretty directed questions, but the last question is basically open-ended. You can write us whatever you want and let us know. And it's completely anonymous. I think I actually forgot to put that in the email. It's completely anonymous. We will not know who's giving the comments um, because you just go in and um, there's no personal information um, 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 you know, um, requested. Okay. Um, so with that, I'll get started. Um, I'm gonna do the first two modules today. The first thing we'll talk about is scientific writing. This will be, I think, the last scientific writing module we have. You never know, we might come up with something else, but for now, I think this is it. Um, and then I'll go into um, figures, which is really the topic of our today. Um, but I wanted to get this last scientific um, uh, writing module in before, um, because you guys are now like in your main writing, your main writing phase. So um, hopefully all of these scientific writing tips we've been giving you are coming in handy. Okay, so the goal of today's last scientific writing uh, module is on how to write good sections of a, a document. Um, so, you know, this really builds on what we've been learning in the in the past scientific writing sections. We spent several modules talking about how to write good sentences. The last one is where we learned how to write, or we talked about how to write a good paragraph. Now we're going bigger. So how do you write a section? A section of a paper would be introduction or the discussion of a research paper. Or for this class and this um, proposal writing, um, it would, it's of course going to be your uh, background and significance sections, which you should have just finished writing. So you know that's a pretty big section, as well as then the approach section, which we will talk about on Thursday. We won't get to that today. Um, Ed, did you start the recording? Did you start the recording? Yes, yes I did. Okay, perfect, making sure. I just didn't see it. Thanks okay. for letting me know. <laughs> All right. So um, first I wanted to clear up a myth. You know, I love these little myths. So one of them, the, it's only one today. So the myth is clear, concise, and impactful sentences in a well-organized paragraph is enough for effective scientific writing. And of course, the answer is no, because we're having a whole, set, a whole uh, module on sections. And, and this is really important um, to get your sections in logical flow. Um, because you want to tell a story. A well-written scientific document must have, must have logical flow in each section to make a complete, thoughtful, and clear story. So, um, and, the, and the logical flow of the introduction, discussion, background, significant approach sections of your document is what we're going to talk about. Okay, so I'm going to frame this, um, this scientific writing module in terms of tips. So I'm going to give you three tips for how to uh, write sections that flow logically. The first is something that we've already discussed in the class last time. You saw that Ed used an outline to organize the topics of the um, background and significant section of our class proposal, the COVID-19 detection proposal. Um, and so I just put it up here. This was his outline. 
um, you know, um, you can see that there were um, uh, just little phrases, little things to alert um, Ed to what he wanted to write in each section. And he had eight sections, so, or eight um, kind of points of his outline. So maybe that would be eight paragraphs, maybe that would be eight subsections, but in any case, he had um, this kind of outline. Okay, so now that you've written an outline, how do you know it's a good outline? So here's my second tip after you've written your outline. Look to see if the information flows logically. So what I would suggest here is you look for keywords, just like you would do for the paragraph. So let's go back to our last scientific writing module where we talked about the logical flow of a paragraph. And I color coded this a little differently than the last time just to make it clearer. But what you can see is that words or you know, key keywords that were in each sentence kind of flow to the next sentence. Next sentence. So like the first sentence you see mentioning these um, deoxyguanosine, deoxycytosine, and those same molecules, DG, DC, were used in the second sentence. Likewise, triisopropyl silo groups were mentioned in the second sentence, and these groups, referring back to triisopropyl silo groups, was in the third sentence. The third sentence has the word solubilize in it, and the fourth sentence includes the word dissolve, which are, of course, similar. Um, uh, likewise, um, hydrogen bonding was in the third sentence, the fourth sentence, and the fifth sentence to kind of link all of those sentences. And then finally, at the very end, uh, the word enthalpy is in the fifth and the sixth sentence. And you can see I should have highlighted this DGDC really relates back to the original sentence. So there's a, re there's a relationship between each sentence that's made very clear because they're key words that, um, that are found uh, similarly in the sentences next to each other. Okay, so how do you know if your paragraph flows logically? You look for the logical connection and keywords in each consecutive sentence. So let's extend that same analogy to sections. Sections should have the same, oops, I went the wrong direction. Sections should have that same continuity, but now in this case, it's not sentence to sentence continuity. It's going to be paragraph to paragraph continuity. So let's look at the outline that we drafted in class together to see if we have that continuity. So for example, what I found, I've color coded this um, just to make it a little bit faster and clearer for you. Um, you, of course, will do this with your own outlines to make sure you have that continuity, but here we'll do it together. So what we can see here is that diagnostics is a word that's in the first topic and diagnostic is a word that's in the second topic. So the two paragraphs, the first paragraph and the second paragraph will have that continuity. Notice in, sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button here. Notice that in the second paragraph then, we introduce the two type of, type of diagnostics, PCR testing and antibody testing, and notice those same words are in the third paragraph, where we will talk a little bit more in depth about these two um, methods. Now, the two methods then end with the gap in the field, which is detection, and that then relates then to the approach that we're taking um, in the fourth paragraph, which is the MR-based approach. So the detection and the MR-based approach are the link together. In the fourth paragraph, we talk about features, and those same features will be highlighted in our hypothesis and technology that will be in the fifth paragraph. Do you see how it goes? So each paragraph is building on the, L, on the rest. And then what I want you to notice is at the very end, in the final paragraphs of the, of the uh, background and significance section, um, the last two kind of main points go right back to the diagnostics that were introduced in the first paragraph, right? So um, um, the idea is that you start with the big picture, you dive deeper into the background, but then you end with the big picture. And the big picture here would be, here's my proposal, this is what I'm going to do. So you wanna start off with the big problem in the field, whether it's a disease or batteries or a life condition, drill down into the background, relinking them all, and then at the very end, come back to the big picture and say, this is what we're gonna to do to address um, that bigger picture. Okay, so this type of format that you're seeing in our class example really follows that same U uneven U-shaped structure that we talked about in paragraphs, but it also applies now to sections. So you're gonna start off, um, you're gonna start off 
with a big kind of big broad statement. Remember this, this U-shaped curve, the five, four and five are sort of general, familiar concepts, kind of big picture concepts. And then one drills down into more detailed evidence-based examples. And then we emerge at the other end of the paragraph or the section coming back to that big picture. So start with the big picture, the general, the familiar, drill down into the less familiar, and then at the very end, come back to the familiar so that we can understand how the proposal is going to impact the bigger picture. Okay? All right, so, so that's kind of the, the first two tips. Um, again, as always, please feel free to um, let me know if you have any questions about this, um, th this material so I can be sure that, um, that you guys are clear. But let's go on to the third tip, the third and final tip, which is related to, um, to the rewriting process that we've been talking about in the class in the, in the um, last few modules on scientific writing. So remember, the first draft of anything is not the last draft. You still have to kind of go through the process of rewriting and rewriting. One level of rewriting is sentence, um, sentences. I want to make my sentences as clear, concise, and impactful as possible, right? The second is do my paragraphs logically flow? But now we've added another level of rewriting, which is do my sections, does my section, do the paragraphs in my section logically flow? And remember the goal here is to tell a compelling research story. We wanna make sure that, um, that everything flows so that your audience really can appreciate the value of your work. Okay, so this is where my third tip comes in. Now that you've written your first draft of your background and significant section, so that's what you've already done, that was your homework for today. Now the third tip is to use the same process of reverse outlining that we used in the beginning of the class to um, read papers. We can use that same reverse outlining to critique if our logical flow is good, is um, logical, okay? So how would we do this? So you guys can do this tonight after class because reverse outlining is something you should be familiar with. So remember, what is reverse outlining? Let's go back to the first few classes, um, in the uh, first few lectures of this class. Remember that reverse outlining is just briefly, quick phrase of keywords summarizing of each paragraph. So you wanna make sure that that's, you know, it's just a short summary of the paragraph um, and so you're gonna write out what those short summaries are. And then considering those short summaries of each paragraph in your background and significance section, consider the following ideas. Does the topic of the paragraph relate back to the main idea of the paper? So you wanna make sure that you're only including information that's relevant and necessary for the reader to appreciate your idea. You don't want just a general background review of the whole field. You wanna focus your background section on only those ideas that relate to your goals of your, of your pop proposal. So that's one idea. Do the paragraphs repeat the same, do several paragraphs repeat, repeat the same topic? If you find that they're repeating the same topic, maybe you can condense all that information to one paragraph so that you can use the rest of your space more efficiently. Does one paragraph, so the other half, so do you have too many paragraphs talking about one um, idea? The other side of that coin is do you have one paragraph that tries to do too much? You've got several topics that are jumbled up in one paragraph and maybe it would be clear to the reader if you pulled out those topics into separate paragraphs to really talk about those ideas thoroughly. Another thing to think about is are there any logical jumps? So when you're thinking about the um, topics of each paragraph, do you find that you start off talking about topic A but then you don't come back to topic A till paragraph five. So there's sort of a choppiness to how you're introducing your topics. Make sure that just like we did in the class um, outline of our background and significance statement, make sure that each section flows because they have similar keywords to link them. And then finally, are there any paragraphs that are just too, any summaries of the paragraphs that are too long and short, which really can indicate you're doing too much in that paragraph. So what I thought I would do to, to kind of um, make this reverse outlining kind of um, come to life for you, um, I took from this really nice, um, this really nice document, reverse outlining, that comes to us from 
um, Duke University, I took that, this um, example and I thought we would talk about it together. And this, of course, has nothing to do with the natural sciences that we're doing, the chemistry that we're doing in our proposal, but I think you can um, uh, appreciate how just generally this reverse outlining can help you to see some possible flaws in um, the logic of, of, a, of a, a section. So here's the claim. This is the kind of hypothesis. Again, this is a little different than our class, but I think you can appreciate it. Deinstitutionalizing mental patients in the late 20th century led to transforming the hobo to the homeless person. So it's just talking about kind of historic, this is a history paper. So the paragraphs, again, after summarizing using reverse outlining look like this, the first paragraph is an introduction. Seven, the second paragraph really introduces an image of a hobo. The, second, the third paragraph is the image of a homeless person. And of course, this is about hobos and homeless people, so it's contrasting those. Paragraph four is about deinstitutionalization, um, the effects of it. Uh, uh, paragraph five is the history of it. Paragraph six has a bunch of stuff in it, the history of the depression, how the depression affects is, is both di different and similar, incorrect beliefs. Um, seven, is, the seventh paragraph is about the Reagan administration's policy on institutional um, deinstitutionalization. De paragraph eight is the realities of life as a homeless person, and then there's the conclusion. So kind of thinking back to what we talked about in, um, in the last, oops, sorry, in the last section, do you see anything about this outline thinking about how long are the, the topics, how many topics, are some of them the same? Are some of them too long? Are there logical jumps? To, let, me, um, let me hear from you about what you think about this uh, first draft of this uh, history paper. Do you see any obvious problems here that you could e easily fix? I'll give you a second to think about that. We're ahead of schedule, so I think I can uh, give you a second. You can put it in the chat or you're welcome to unmute yourself and just uh, shout out what you see. All right, well, I'll give you a hint. Do you notice that any one of these paragraphs has a way longer summary than the others? Right? Yes, good, thank you. Thank you for the student who said, Sarah, paragraph six is too long, right? It's got, how many different topics do you see there? One, two, three different topics all in one paragraph. That's a key that, okay, that's just way too long. So what do we do? We should separate those three key summaries into three different paragraphs, right? Maybe it's in the same subheading, of your your paper you know i would strongly encourage you in your background and significant sections to have subheadings to kind of give order and organization to the reader so it could be all in the same maybe three paragraphs within the same subheading but um they should be separated out okay do you guys see anything else what do you guys think of putting images before history or effects before history what kind of thing, what's more logical to you? Yeah, so I, so the, the, the student wrote in the effects of, uh, the effects in paragraph four should be after history in paragraph five, exactly. Usually, logically, you would put history and then talk about the effects of that history, right? Right, history and then effects. So we would probably, and look, in paragraph six, the history of depression probably would also come before effects, right? Right, so kind of good, great, that was really helpful. But so you can see how coming up with these summaries, you can start logically seeing that, oh, you know, maybe I was a little out of order there, or maybe I'm putting too much in a paragraph. Okay, so here's kind of what I did to, to maybe I, to, we could now revise this to kind of fix some of these issues. So for example, um, we're gonna separate that, par that really huge paragraph six into paragraph six, seven, and eight, history of depression, how the depression is both different and similar and incorrect beliefs. So now we have 11 paragraphs to our paper. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to reverse the history and the effects are gonna go inverse. So we're gonna change that order. We're gonna put the history first, effects later. And then something else that I noticed that we haven't discussed yet is notice that we talk about a homeless person way up in paragraph three. And then we don't talk about homeless people again until paragraph 10. 
That is a logical, that is like a big, huge jump, right? We want to be sure that our, just like we saw in our continuity in our paragraph and in our outline, we want to make sure that the words, the key words are in, in paragraphs or sentences that are right next to each other. So probably what I would do here is I would probably move the realities of life as a homeless person to earlier. So move paragraph 10 to probably more close to paragraph three to put homeless people, um, the topic of homeless people in, in uh, paragraphs next to each other. Um, and then notice like deinstitutionalization here um, is in one, two, three, four paragraphs, no, five paragraphs, but paragraph six is sort of in the middle of all that, right? Why would we have that topic of deinstitutionalization broken up by um, this history of the depression? So again, we wanna put those in logical order so that they are, um, all the topics are kind of contracted together to make a more cohesive document. Okay, so um, so that's kind of the example I wanted to show you. So when you are get to your going back to rewrite your background and significance section um, tonight, tomorrow, whenever you can get to it, do the reverse outlining of your own writing, summarize, and then see if those summaries really make sense to you. Are you seeing the same keywords in paragraphs next to each other? Are you seeing logical jumps? Are you seeing too much being done in a paragraph? Is not enough being done in a paragraph? Okay. Okay. Um, so here are my references. Um, and I'll stop there. Any questions about that as I move on to the next module? Okay, great. So I hope that's the end of scientific writing. I hope you guys are starting to feel all this information helping you to become that.